get by It resides between my eyes Walk through the fire Came out better on the other side See like like a beach If you find the same like right now I feel like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders. And I'm here with David and Sam Littlefield. I'm going to introduce them formally in a second. But David and Sam, I always like to mention other episodes people should check out. Um, since they, you know, they have a lot, they've been doing this for, I'm going to say, uh, over 41 years, uh, their company's been in existence. But they have B2B, they have food, they have financial services, but I thought I'd think of some in the food space, guys. So I had uh, Noah Alper, um, who started Noah's Bagels. He started one store in 1989 and built it to a chain of 38 stores. He sold to Einstein Bagels for over $100 million in 1995. But what I love about the stories and the stories of Inspired Insider is not just about the success because all we both know that there's a lot of peaks and valleys to this. And he talked about how he was selling um, religious tchotchkes out of the back of his trunk to make <laughs> ends meet. And it wasn't always, you know, just this hundred million dollar sale. He, he started a lot of businesses and there were some ups and downs along the way. So check out that interview with uh, Noah oh. Alper. It's really, really good. Um, and there's many more on Spirit Inside to come. Even the founder of Big League Chew. Um, I loved having him on talking about sitting in the bullpen as a minor league pitcher and coming up with the idea for big league chew. And so that was an amazing story. And I just love the product too. So, um, that, and, and many more, uh, this episode is brought to you by rise 25 at rise 25. We help businesses give to and connect to their dream 100 relationships and partnerships. And we do that by helping you run your podcast. And for me, the number one thing in my life is relationships. I'm always looking at ways to give to my best relationships and have the people, the companies that I admire, profiling them on my podcast so that everyone can get to know them better. So if you have thought about starting or launching a podcast, you can go to rise25.com and email us for any questions. We've been doing it for over a decade now before people even knew what a podcast was. And so check it out. And this is brought to you by, you know, the Spot On series with top leaders in the restaurant and food. Matt Hyman started Spot On um, and they have a flagship solution, Spot On Restaurant, where they have a software and payments uh, solution for restaurants. And they've served Dairy Queen, Quiznos, Subway, many more. This is appropriate for this episode because the Liverpool Agency helps a lot of restaurants, actually. So um, it was founded in 1980, believe it or not, Littlefield Agency in over 41 years has served B2B and food and financial. And they even have an official holiday every year declared <laughs> by the mayor of Tulsa um, <laughs> in June. Do you know, it? like they've been around. I mean, they've specialized in B2B and restaurant and they, you know, they've even served the Tulsa Airport, Francis Energy, Tulsa Health Department, Rib Crib, and so many more. I just want to thank Sam and David Littlefield for joining me. Hey, happy to be here. Good to be with you. You know, I know, um, David, we had a conversation before about how this the agency started out in, in uh, the services, right? And you talked about the radio, the TV, the billboard, direct mail, which first of all, I geek out on direct mail and all that stuff now. And, and that stuff's not even dead. But, um, and we're going to get into the, I think this is going to be fascinating, Sam, because the transition of leadership and the shift in leadership and everything like that we're going to get into. But David, start us off over 40 years ago. What did the agency look like? What were some of the services and, and clients? I started my agency in 1980 after working for two different other agencies. And both of them were, uh, keep in mind, this is 1980, so it was a long time ago. Both of them were 100% creatively focused. And they were run by creative directors. The owners of the companies were the creative directors. And I remember uh, the first company as a young account manager, um, uh, we were more afraid to go back and tell the creative director owner that we didn't sell his concept than we were to <laughs> argue with the client that this is what they ought to do. It was, it was nuts. And so long story short, uh, when I started my company, my background before I got in the agency business was in sales and marketing. And I thought, you know, people, the, the creative is important because that's the means to the end, but that's not why 
people hire an agency. They want to sell more product or they sell, want more results. Ser- sell more services. Yeah. And so we were putting the creative uh, cart before the marketing horse, if you will. And so I started my agency with a focus on let's do have this be research based, marketing based, uh, uh, more of a strategic level. And uh, so I started this as a one man band using creative resources on a freelance basis for probably two and a half years till I grew to a point where I could start adding the staff. And the first person that I hired uh, after an administrative assistant was a very, very good creative director that believed in the way I wanted to do this. And uh, so we built our, our company based upon on marketing strategy and research, but really good creative to deliver the messaging once we know what's the most relevant message between that's going to resonate with that, that customer for that brand. I love that because it speaks to results. Um, I mean, you're focused on results for the client. I mean, how, however you get there, you get there, but you want to get them results. And um, who are some of the key hires? You mentioned initially you had an admin, which was key in getting stuff off your plate. And then you had a creative director. Who are some of the other key hires throughout the years? The first media director I had was very well respected in, in uh, the, the Oklahoma community. And she was ready for a change. And that was a, a big leap of faith on her part to, to join me at that time because we were small, hadn't built our reputation yet. But over, over the years, uh, 21, no, 20, 27 years ago, I lose track of time, um, we were the first agency in Oklahoma in this region to start an account planning practice. And uh, that, was a, that was a critical hire. And it was a former client that I hired. It was a very bright lady that was a very good strategist, but very intuitive. And I challenged her to come in and start an account planning practice. And that's, uh, that took us to a different level for 25 years. Uh, most recently, um, you know, back in the old day, there used to be a, an ad that people would run, a, a, a famous quote, and I can't remember the guy that said it, but <clears throat> I know that 50% of my advertising is wasted. I just can't tell you which 50%. You remember that? Exactly. I think it was the one big advertising guru who said that too, right? It was yeah. someone in the industry, yeah. Yeah, but anyway, uh, so I'm going to say, Sam, what, three years ago, we started an analytics uh, practice. Yeah, yeah. And uh, there is, and, you know, with everything moving, you know, more, there's still a balance of traditional media and digital, but there's so many more tools now in that digital space where you can close a loop and track results. Those are some of the the mm-hmm. critical hires. And then I will say this, I was very fortunate. Uh, my son, Sam, uh, went to school out in San Diego, worked for uh, Miram, uh, international digital uh, agency for several years out there before he came back and joined us. And he's been a critical hire and a just a, a godsend I think, I think I think he has to say that because I'm his son, Jeremy. I actually, you could say the opposite because he's your son. <laughs> well, you know, he, hey, no, he I could, say what I can lean friends. into you hard. Uh, I'm yeah, kidding. right. So, I, we were fortunate that, uh, first of all, uh, fortunate that my son wanted to be in this business. But it's yeah. fortunate for us that he had that background, and fortunate yeah. for us that he's really good at this. I've got friends that have transitioned to family members, and it hadn't gone so well. Yeah. So uh, I would say Sam is another. Uh, critical hire. Yeah, I'm gonna. I look forward to hearing about how this transition phase goes because it's not easy. Whether it's even if it's an outside person, let alone family, it just there's a lot of other factors that can complicate things as well. Um, and I think so. I'd love to hear Sam to start with just the analytics practice. But yeah. I mean, I think if I went to San Diego, I don't know if I'd ever go back yeah. to anywhere else but San Diego. So. Um. Fun fact, I moved back July 26, 2016. It was 104 degrees in Tulsa. And I got off that plane and I was like, man, I made a mistake. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it, it took me a while until we got into fall here and it was good weather and the leaves were turning. Um, but no, I, I'll tell you, the we we actually kind of, it's, it was uh, a godsend. We stumbled into the analytics business, um, which was really fascinating how that happened. We actually, uh, we were hiring for an account manager for a key account of ours. And we found this guy and about six months in, um, quickly learned since Chris Kaiser. Um, Chris, Chris has been with us for three years. 
And uh, we quickly learned that uh, his brain uh, works a lot differently than most account managers. He was very result oriented, um, very data driven. Um, so he started suggesting some things to our clients um, and we, we sat him down and I said, hey, what you're doing is kind of in that analyst analytics manager role. And he goes, man, you're, you're talking about my dream job. And so we, we had a transition plan. Um, Chris basically was an account manager for us for about a year. And then we transitioned him to a full-time analytics manager, um, which has been huge because, you know, to dad's point earlier, uh, we need results. Well, in today's age, we need results right now. What are we doing today that is working? What are we doing today that is not working? And how are we changing that on an ongoing basis? So Chris and our media director, who we actually found a media director out of Tennessee almost one year ago to the day. Um, her name's Kelly and she's phenomenal. Uh, 20 years of food experience. So her experience tied together with our analytics manager has been a game changer. What's interesting is both of you had worked in previous agencies um, before. So, and, and Sam, I imagine you grew up in the agency world because of your dad. Oh. For you, Sam, what uh, observations, lessons did you learn from your dad from afar? And then also yeah. going into the San Diego experience. Yeah, no, it's, it's an interesting story and I'll try to keep it short, Jeremy. Um, we, dad told me growing up, you know, he's been in this, I, we grew up at the agency. We came up here after school. Um, my mom was the CFO for 20 years. Um, so she'd pick us up from school and we'd come and little did I know that we were probably wrecking with everyone's day because um, we wanted to play around and, you know, we throw a tennis ball around. Uh, but dad actually, he, he always told me, he goes, man, never get into this business. It is a wild, crazy ride. Um, but he goes, when times are, when times are good, it's fun. And obviously, given the pandemic this last year, when times are bad, it's, a, it's a, an interesting business to be in. Um, we grew up here at the agency. Um, and so the interesting thing is, dad said that this was a, a wild and crazy business when times were good. It's a fun business to be in. When it's uh, like last year's pandemic, it's a really interesting business to be in, uh, to say the least. So when I went out to San Diego, I, honest to God, I never really thought about getting in this business. I was an English major. Um, I had aspirations to be in sales. I, that's kind of my natural personality fit. And uh, I got, I landed this job at this global agency in San Diego and I kind of faked my way through it and somehow made it within a few years on their account management and new business development team. Um, and I woke up one day and I was, I was single, I was 25 years old and living in one of the most expensive cities in the nation. And dad was at a conference up in Palm Springs. And so I, I drove up and took the day off and saw him. And I said, Hey, I think, I think I'm ready to come home. And dad, I think your jaw dropped when I told you, <laughs> uh, I don't think you're expecting that, but, uh, I, I quickly realized that there is, this is a really, really cool and fascinating business. There's, especially in today's age, there's so many different outlets to marketing. Marketing means so many different things than what it did when he started this business 41 years ago. Um, so I've been back for, uh, five years now. I say, you know, officially five, unofficially, I turned 30 in October, I've been in this business for 30 years. Um, yes. but it, it's, it's been, <laughs> it's been a great, a great five years for sure. Talk about the transition. Um, I'd love to hear both of your takes on, um, you know, David, the transition, how to smoothly transition in general, and then also navigating that it's a family member. Well, I'll, for, let, I'll let you start, Dad. Okay. For starters, um, Sam had communicated to us that uh, we had a we had a plan that was probably going to be a year and a half or two years out before we did this. But Sam sat me down one day at lunch and said, Hey, you know what? I'm, I'm really ready, ready to go. And so what we did was uh, I made him in 2020, January, I made him president of the agency, not knowing COVID was coming. And I told him, I said, look, we're, there's enough uh, scenarios for potential conflict between the two of us. And the most important thing to both of us is this father-son relationship. So I said, let's try to keep the conflicts to a minimum. You run operations and help me with business development, and I'll take care of everything else. And I made him president. So that gave Sam, and then COVID hit in what, March, yeah. April. Yeah. And But that gave Sam a, a, a runway, if you will, to prove to himself to the staff here, we've got 20 employees that 
okay, there's a, there's a new sheriff in town. Some things are going to change, but not a lot. And I would say everybody has been very respectful. And I, uh, there's a, Sam and I are in a CEO network called Magnet. I don't know if you've talked to any Magnet agencies or not, but I've been in that for over 30 years. Got some great friends in there. And uh, Dan Nelson up in Milwaukee uh, shared with me that when he transitioned to his son, uh, the best advice he said he could give me was uh, if people come to you with a problem, tell them they got to go to Sam. Uh, don't try to fix Sam's problems. Yeah, and, and I'll, uh, I'll we, 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 we haven't had anybody come to me. <laughs> uh, so, and, and I'll even, I'll backtrack before that, um, Jeremy. When I first started five years ago, the first thing we said, when we sat down the first day, we shook each other's hand and said that, you know, father-son relationship first, business second. Um, and of course, we butted heads. I mean, it's, it's inevitable. Um, but it was tricky for me coming into an agency. Uh, our, our tenure here, our average tenure is 13 years. People, people come and work here and, and they stay. It's a great place to work. It's a great work-life balance. We have these awesome clients. Um, but coming in when people saw me at the age of 12, 13 years old, and then here, here's the next generation taking kind of a tricky, uh, some at times tricky situations. Uh, to be completely honest, there's a lot of people that don't work here anymore. And uh, that it was just kind of finding that fit. So when I approached dad, and again, we, we had mapped out kind of what dad, a seven-year plan. Um, mm -hmm. and after two and a half years, I, and I moved really quick, um, just as fast as I possibly can. I, and we were on a road trip to Oklahoma city. And I said, I'm ready, you know, I'm, I'm ready to take this over. I'm ready to go. And I could tell, you know, after 40 years, he's, he's ready for his next phase. And so what we've been working on from a transition standpoint is how is dad still involved on key accounts when he needs to be? Um, and you know, I'm running operations, new business, he's in charge of the finances. Um, but also, you know, how do we, uh, I, I have full access to a guy that has 40 years of wisdom. Uh, I don't, I couldn't have gotten through last year by myself. There's no way. Um, I had to let go of some people, um, because of this freaking pandemic, which is just, you know, it's the worst thing ever. Dad always says it takes, uh, some years off the back end of your life. And he, he couldn't be more true about that. Um, but ha having him here as a sounding board, um, is, is by far the best. I mean, his office is right there. I mean, we're, we're 10 feet away from each other and, uh, it's, it's a pretty, we have a pretty cool dynamic and relationship. Uh, we know how to turn it off and we need to turn it off. If we go and hit some balls, golf balls together, you know, sometimes we don't talk work. It's just father, son. So that's, I think that's been really nice. We, we know a lot of people that are father, son, father, daughter, taking over companies that do not go smoothly. Um, so we're, we're for sure fortunate in that sense. Yeah, no doubt. I think, um, you know, one of the things that sounded like you did is you really divided responsibilities and just gave the reins over on certain departments to Sam, um, which basically you are the boss now, right? What, what are some other things you did and then, or maybe... The opposite. What have you seen with other people's transitions that maybe they made some mistakes that you're like, well, I'm going to be sure to not do that. And <laughs> when we, when we transition. Well, I'll, I'll start on that because in, in that CEO network magnet, uh, there's been I'm, I'm six or seven agencies that I've seen transition some to family and some to other people. And there's another gentleman, I won't name names. That wouldn't be cool. But uh, his dad, uh, transition to business him and basically said, I want you to do this. And one of the first things I said mm -hmm. to Sam, when he said to me years ago, do you think I'd be any good in this business? I, I said, I think you'll be great at anything you decide to do. But if you want to come back from San Diego and join me in the business, it has to be your idea, not mine. Yeah. Well, this, this other friend of ours, his dad never said that to him. And so he not only forced his son to take over the business and fund his retirement. He never, ever really left. And so in this guy was 89 years old and still showing up at work. And in this one example, took over a piece of business that he had a relationship with. And our friend is going, Oh my gosh, uh, what, what's going on here? So I said to myself, I'm not going to do that to Sam. Uh, I mean, I'm going to be here. I still got one foot in and one foot out. I've cut back on my hours, but I'm not going to, uh, sabotage, uh, what Sam's doing. I'm here to help him. 
Uh, so there was a, an example of me learning a lesson from someone else that I didn't want to do. Well, and I'll, I'll add on top of that. Um, last year was a blessing in disguise. It was still terrible. Um, but with that pandemic, Jeremy, and, you know, we go to a completely remote model for months, um, basically the entire year. Um, there was there was a lot of growing up that I had to do really, really fast. Um, and like I said, luckily that I had his wisdom and uh, dad was a great sounding board. Um, but in part of that is there were so many opportunities from a leadership standpoint that I just had to walk into and own it and go um, that I think <laughs> our employees here now, the 20 others that are here, uh, they quickly realized, OK, this is this is dad calls it a new sheriff in town. I'm not the biggest fan of that saying, but hey, here's here's the next generation. And uh this is the way it's going to be. So I, I'm curious, Sam. So you went to your dad and you said, I'm ready. Okay. Yeah. So I guess it was two and a half years. Maybe he was expecting another two and a half of five years <laughs> yeah. or so. What was it to you that you thought that at that point that you were like, I'm ready now? We have a saying, um, when it's the fourth quarter and there's five seconds left, who wants the basketball? You know, you want the last shot. And um, that's kind of been instilled through my whole entire life. And I wanted the ball. I wanted key client relationships and I developed the relationships. Um, I started vocalizing more in meetings across the board. I started thinking differently strategically. Um, in a new business world, I became so comfortable. It's just, God, it's just fun. I mean, you, you have Dad's always said, um, clients come to us because they have a challenge and we have the solution to help them sell more stuff. Um, and that started to click way sooner than I thought it would. Um, and like I said, at that time, I thought I was ready. And then the pandemic happened and I was like, oh my gosh, this is a whole new set of challenges. And I had to do a lot more growing up then. But um, like I said, we were in the middle of a road trip to Oklahoma City and I, I leaned and I had no idea how he was going to take it. But I, I turned to him and I said, I am so ready. Um, and I mean, like I'm as ready as I think that was in the fall. And then we announced that I was president a few months later uh, going into 2020 before the pandemic. It's interesting because, you know, everyone has different leadership styles, right? And you mentioned, <laughs> yeah. you know, because of the pandemic, you kind of just had to step up and mm -hmm even more, more in that time than any other time to kind of lead a company and lead through this crazy time. Um, what, what are the differences or similarities between your <laughs> two leadership styles? Oh man, David, I don't know. Maybe you want to, you want to go first on that. Well, I'll, I'll just give you one example. Yeah. Um, uh, I don't know if you know about the Enneagram. Uh, are you familiar with the Enneagram at all? No, I, I've okay. heard the term, but I don't know. Well, it's a personality like Briggs personality yes. profile yes. like Myers Briggs. And anyway, I'm a six in the Enneagram and Sam's not. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I'll give you an example. If somebody would come to me with a uh, little off kilter idea, hey, why, don't we, why aren't we doing this? My style would be, well, you know what? Let me let me think about that. Uh, that's a possibility. Let me get back to you. Okay. Sam, if they asked him that Sam would go, uh, yeah, you know what? We're not doing that. <laughs> or the contrary, if it's an amazing idea, boom, go, go and do it, go and execute it right now. I don't have to think about it. I'm, I'm very, um, I'm a gut oriented person. Uh, that, that would be my mom in me. Um, uh, my, my mom has always talked about a good, good gut. And uh, so if someone come and pitches an idea and it's amazing, absolutely run, go. And sometimes our, our creative director, he's been here for uh, 15 years, 16 years. And uh, sometimes, you know what, I'm going to let you sleep on that one more day before you really give. Me <laughs> so you're, uh, you're full, full steam ahead yeah. or not. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and, and hey, if it's a terrible idea, it's not on strategy. Nope. Uh, We'll, we'll move in a different direction. Well, so. Rocco, our creative director, said that says that to you because for 15 years, I was saying that. <laughs> okay, let me think about it. So he's, yeah, he's let, let, let me give you a good example. This morning, the internet went out and we discovered that it's because the firewall with our phone system. And he goes, hey, we have two years left on our contract, um, but we have the option to potentially get rid of our phones now. And I was like, get rid of our phones. We live in a Zoom world. We don't need phones anymore. Where, you know, 
dad might take a couple of weeks to think about it. But I was like, no, if, it, if it's a nuisance to our internet, we don't need phones. <laughs> so it's, it's little things like that. But so my, so my comment was, okay, well, you, you better keep that phone number. Cause I've had that phone number. Since <laughs> <my time. laughs> I think you can transition it to like a Google voice or something. You yeah, 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 yeah. There you go. That's what we're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's some um, differences. What's another maybe similarity or difference that, you can think of as far as leadership goes? Um, I'd say a similarity. And I think this is, it's just intrinsic from me growing up for 30 years with dad as my father. Um, we look out for the best interest of our employees and our people. Uh, you know, I've read a lot of leadership books. The best leaders are those that are not emotional and that can, you know, make a game time decision. And, you know, you're, you're taking the name out of the situation, looking at uh, profitability and numbers. And hey, of course, we have to run a profitable business. Um, but I mean, at the end of the day, uh, I think the reason that people stick around here is because we offer this wonderful work-life balance. Obviously, we're here to service our clients. Um, and we've got we've to make a living and come in and work every day. Um, but however, we, we really do um, treat our employees uh, with a lot of flexibility. Uh, we're very understanding people. Um, and we're very family oriented. Obviously, we're in a family business um, and family at the end of the day is one of the most important things. So I, I'd say that's a similarity. So, Jeremy, have you ever heard of a concept called adult PTO? Uh, uh, yes. OK, it's unlimited PTO. And as an example of what Sam's talking about, um, we used to bank extra PTO days and you could carry forward 15 or 20 days. And once you bank that many, then you just. We're burning. Well, we have people. I mean, they love working, and they and they don't need to take as much time off. And so they're leaving in the last two weeks in December because they're they don't want to burn their PTO. So we just set everybody down. Probably this is when you first uh, came back. So no, it was about two two ish years ago. Okay, and we just said, okay, look, you, you know what? We've always been flexible. If you need time off, or you got to go to family funeral, or your kid's sick or whatever. So we're just going to take that to a different level. And just, we have a, what we call adult PTO. It's, we're not going to bank it anymore because it's unlimited. And uh, there's got to be a trust there. Uh, like Sam said, we got to show up and work and get our work done and be respectful of others. Cause you know, if an art director just blows something off, that affects everybody that works here. Right. So um, I think our people appreciate that. Yeah, and then I'd, I'd say one more just from a similarity standpoint. Um, I worked at a 2,000-person agency in San Diego, 12 offices worldwide, sexy clients, cool atmosphere, fun employee events, et cetera. And coming back here to a 20-person shop, it's a whole different ballgame. Um, but being an independent agency, um, having a smaller staff, one thing that I think that the two of us share in common, that's why we're in this business, we take our clients' business very seriously. Um, we have great relationships across the board, Grasshopper, Ditch Witch, um, Incredible Pizza, and we've got a bunch of other awesome Tulsa and Oklahoma brands. Um, but I think one of the reasons that our clients hire us year over year is not that we're great people to work with, but we take their business so seriously to your earlier point about results, right? Um, that's what we lose sleep over is how can we uh, bring better ideas to our clients? How do we kick um, the competition's ass? We have competitive clients, which I think is really cool. Uh, they want to demolish their competition and we're very competitive people as well. So um, that passion and that excitement for our clients' business translates across the board here. And that's why I think we developed this great work and result-oriented work. I want to highlight some of the type of work you do and the type of clients you serve. And I'd love for you to start with Ditch Witch. What, what are some of the things you did? And they've seen a, an amazing trajectory um, with, with their business. Yeah, I mean, we've done. So I remember the day we picked up Ditch Witch. Uh, almost 20 years ago, we were down in Dallas for the Big 12 basketball tournament. Dad got the phone call from... Uh, his client, still our client at the time, and one of dad's really good friends um, to this day, just through 20 years of relationship. But we have a really cool opportunity with Ditchers. We started with them very traditionally, obviously, back in uh, 0102. Um, you don't get, not many agencies get to say that they took a company into the digital age, and we did. Um, you know, we launched them on social media. We launched them digitally. 
uh, ditch, which is this amazing client, um, where if you're, if you bring them an idea that's on strategy and is, uh, it, they can get behind, they'll let you do it. Um, and, and there's a lot of brands that don't let you do that. So, yeah. And I'll give ditch Witch great credit because they are open to, to new ways of thinking a yeah. lot of, a lot of B2B manufacturers, uh, don't want to take the risk and a great example of bringing a big idea to them. And Sam mentioned them being so competitive and wanted to, you know, crush the competition. Uh, in 2019, uh, we were privy to some new technology in VR, virtual reality. And so we, uh, they have a drill that they invented that uh, you no longer have to tear up a street. You can be on one side of the street and you need to get a pipe underneath the street. The drill goes under the street, up, uh, under, up, and you just pull the pipe through. And this so- is the biggest product launch in 10 years, yeah. Yeah, so we developed uh, with an outsourced uh, uh, VR company, a, you put the goggles on and you are sitting in the cab of this drill Mm -hmm. And That's you amazing. watch the drill bit go underground and through the water and through the rock and through the dirt. And it was, a roller, it was a roller coaster. And you actually it, you ended up on the moon. It was pretty cool. And if you're back in the cab, as you turn around, you're seeing the work environment. It, it's just an, an incredible. If you, if you know what I'm talking about on VR, but anyway, well, I have an Oculus Quest too. Hey, I there love. Go. Oh, okay. So, there you go. I, well, am, we, I we, totally we, dig we, VR. We launched this, their biggest trade show in that underground construction equipment category is so big, it's only every two years. And we launched this at IQ and we had three of these set up that customers and prospects were lined and competitor salespeople yeah. were lined up waiting to get into these things. And the salesmen for their number one competitor were demolished. They were, they were walking around with their heads hanging down because we just kicked their ass on this deal. It was the talk of the trade show. It really and cool. it took some courage uh, for Ditch Witch to let us, we brought them that idea and they're like, whoa, can you really pull that off? Uh, so it's a combination to bring in the right thinking with the right Nick technology and have the client say, yeah, let's give that a shot. For people who don't know what Ditch Witch does, can you give us an overview a little bit? Yeah, you know, uh, gosh, how many years ago was it? Uh, 75 years ago, uh, an engineer graduate from Oklahoma State University, his name Ed Molzon, invented the gearbox that turns a chain that turns the trencher, the boom that goes into and, the yeah. ground. He invented the trencher. He, in, he literally invented the trencher, which invented the whole trencher category. Hmm. And that's what started Ditch Witch. And then they evolved over. 75 years, they wanted to be the experts, the leader of underground construction. So if you need to dig a hole, uh, that's where the drill came in. Uh, well, one of the coolest applications is obviously we rely on the internet for everything. They literally provide the pathway for fiber to the home. So people have internet because of ditch switch equipment. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a fascinating world. That is amazing. So ditch witch, um, Let's go to in the food space because you guys, I know, do a lot in the food space. Um, incredible pizza. Yeah. So we um, just a little backstory um, right before the pandemic, which we're calling the world's worst timing, the world's best timing. Um, we worked with a consultant and uh, we we worked with Rib Crib, which is a 55 location barbecue chain here in the Midwest. Um, they had worked with numerous big agencies um, down in the Dallas area and Kansas City. And for years had flat sales and they came to us in their first year after working with us, they had their first top line revenue growth in eight years. So we said, okay, we're on to something here. Our people loved the food and restaurant world. And so um, we had a lot of, um, oh man, let's call them heart to heart conversations internally. And we decided we've got this great B2B experience. We need to own that with Grasshopper and Ditch Witch, two awesome clients of ours. Um, but we decided to launch on the national front in the food space. So we kind of took a leap of faith. And so as you go to our website, everything, uh, we, we have our B2B segment, um, but on the na nationally, we're going after restaurants and, uh, and entertainment venues. And um, we got in touch with Incredible Pizza uh, towards the end of 2020. Um, and they have the most amazing story how they uh, created their brand 20 years ago. 
obviously COVID about killed them. They've got seven locations across the Midwest um, from San Antonio up to Memphis. Um, and we, we worked with their CEO and VP of marketing. Um, and, and they were, uh, when the world started to come back to normal earlier this year, uh, they hired us on for a full media and analytics engagement. And uh, we've been working with them and they have, uh, over the last 20 years, they've got the best sales that they ever had um, in the history of the company, which is huge. And the cool thing is back to your, you know, our earlier point about results, um, you know, they're obviously straight B to C and their sales today. I mean, they are so reliant on Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. And our program, we're able to attribute people actually walking into a physical, incredible pizza location. And we can attribute that to the marketing dollars and the messaging and the creative that's out there. Um, so the cool thing is we work with them um, on a daily basis and we tell them, hey, here's what performed well this week. Here's what didn't. Here's how we're shifting budget and dollars. And uh, here's how we're uh, reallocating money towards different tactics based off performance. That has been an awesome thing for us. A uh, whole different world, just to Dad's point earlier about the B2B and the dealership uh, networks. Um, but it's been a really fun space to be in. And we just picked up a new uh, um, a new brand out of the Maryland, Delaware, Pennsylvania area um, that's in the food space. So we're, we're starting to get some traction there. I could go for a barbecue brisket. Right about now. That sounds delicious. <laughs> yeah, right? um, yeah, it's about lunchtime. I'm hungry. <laughs> I am a sucker for barbecue brisket. I almost went to... I went to Madison for school, University of Wisconsin, but I almost went to Austin just because the brisk, the barbecue was so good there. Um, the, um, the thanks for sharing that. I want to talk about grasshopper. You mentioned grasshopper mowers a couple times and what you did there. Yeah. Dad, do you want to take that one? Yeah. Um, again, because we have that expertise uh, nationally, actually internationally, we do work for uh, ditch, Witch in Europe, um, we built a reputation in that B2B manufacturing space and had an opportunity some, I don't know, six, seven years ago to, uh, they're in Mound Ridge, Kansas, which is about a three and a half hour drive outside of Tulsa. And they uh, asked us to come up and they were intrigued with what we'd done for Ditch Witch and a couple of other uh, manufacturers that we were working with. And uh, we showed them how the whole program worked and how uh, interrelated the, the new digital space was with the old traditional space. And at the end of the meeting, the marketing director said, you know, uh, our current agency that we've had for 22 years has never brought this up. And we're like, OK, well, <laughs> perfect time to change. And uh, they they did. And that's and it's hard for a brand to leave their agency of that many years. Yeah. It's their friendship. They had friendships, relationships. And, uh, you know, uh, I think until they saw a glimpse of the future and they weren't in it, uh, that that gave them the, uh, the courage to change. And so uh, a lot of handholding there because, uh, you know, when you're marching off into a new direction uh, with, with uh, very hefty budgets, uh, they wanted some assurance that, okay, if we're going to shift these dollars, you know, how are we going to make this work? And uh, they have grown tremendously in the last seven years. And, uh, you know, our, our biggest success is clients. Uh, they, they don't just hit the automatic button in January and hire us again. You have to prove your metal Absolutely. every day. And the proof is, hey, if, if it ain't broke, let's don't go fix it. So that's what we strive for. And that's why we're loving the analytics practice uh, coupled with our media group. Uh, Cause that's really where you, you can prove uh, what's working. Yeah. Last question for both of you. Um, before I ask it, I, I would love to know, you know, obviously out of the, besides the two of you mentors, colleagues have been influential in your business career. And it doesn't have to be someone, you know, it could be like a book or something like that, that you, actually respect um in the field or in business so i'd love to hear each of your you know whether it's um distant mentor or you know mentor colleague that you know um before you answer that i just want to point people towards littlefieldagency.com everyone check out more um i love their website that you could go b2b and you can or you can click on the food route i, I don't know if i've seen many websites that really have that kind of 
cool look and feel, but it's very, you know, specific to, you can go where you need to go. So go to littlefieldagency.com to learn more. There's more information about everything that we've talked about there. You can go check out more episodes on inspiredinsider.com as well. And I think it's really cool what you guys do in VR. I think, you know, not just from a B2B standpoint, you could tell they're on the cutting edge because I, I believe VR is the future in a lot of realms and you've already started to implement it for some of these companies, uh, which I think is really cool in B2B and, and, and um, will be in B2C as well. Cause I don't know if I've seen anyone really implement. I mean, I've utilized it myself, but if, from a marketing perspective, I don't know if many people, if anyone is really doing stuff like that. So yeah. it's really cool. Um, Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So from each of you, I love to hear distant mentor, you know, books or programs or, actual personal mentor and you could you can name a few it's fine i know obviously each of you probably have learned a lot from each other uh, but outside of that who else would you consider some lessons you learn okay go for it um well i've got i'll just mention two um early on in my career i met a, a man uh, his name is george owens uh that was uh, a lawyer and we have avoided lawsuits and all that kind of stuff but just business law and good advice and counsel. And over the years, uh, you can imagine in over 40 years, there's, uh, there's ups, there's downs. And when I hit a downside, I mean, there's three major times in that, that we had to let people go out of our control. Uh, 1987, 2002, right after 9-11, uh, the, the two big ones. And I could go to George and he wasn't in the business that we're in. He just was the voice of calm. And his favorite saying was, I'd go in and I'd be all upset. I'm like, oh my God, I got to let five people go. And it's not their fault. And it's not my fault. And they got house payments and car payment. Oh my God. You know, some of these people have worked for us for a long time. And he'd first thing he would say is anybody dying? <laughs> I go, no, nobody's dying. And he goes, okay, so let's, that's the worst thing that can happen. And this isn't the worst thing that can happen. So he calmed me down and helped me think through some things when I really needed help. And I, and he passed away about three years ago and I, I miss, I miss talking to him. Yeah, my other opportunity, this magnet CEO network that I've been in for over 30 years, we meet three times a year. It's an open book. People share financials, share information, share the good stuff, the bad stuff. I've heard every story you can imagine, and you can learn a lot from how other people have done things and made mistakes, and you can learn from how they've done things well, and you can emulate them. And uh, I've got about five really good friends uh, that are CEOs of independent ad agencies that I can call. And now Sam, Sam's been in this yeah. since he came back. He goes, and now he's on the board there. He's so even more active than I am now. And there's just the ability to talk to somebody that you don't have to explain your business and they can help you think things through. It's just been hmm. tremendously valuable. Well, cool. Sam, I know you have a call in a minute. So hey, yeah. Give me uh, a you know quick I'll, give me a I'll, quick I'll, uh, I'll give you a quick yeah. the quick spiel. Magnet for sure. That's huge. I've got some uh, really good friends that I can call on any given day and they'll answer. Um and hey, I'd be remiss. I mean, this guy here on the screen with us, right? He's Put up with me for 30 years from a son standpoint. Uh, but man, I learned, I learned stuff from him all the time. Um, and like I Thank said, you. wouldn't have been able to get through last year without his guidance and counsel. And um, it's, it's why we've got the great father son relationship and a great working relationship. Um, he came from nothing and he built a, a pretty sweet little legacy that I get to continue on. So mm -hmm. it's a, it's a sweet deal. I love it. Thank you Thanks. both. Thanks. Everyone hey, check out littlefieldagency.com. Learn more. And thanks, everyone. Jeremy, thanks, man. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank, Thank you. you. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walked through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand right now. I feel like a hundred.